Well, hello, it is just me again with another short little video. Um, the season is fast approaching, so I thought I would try and help some new hunters out uh, with some duck callers. Uh, there's always that question, I go into the shop, what do I get, what's going to sound good, I don't know what to get, so-and-so said buy this one, another mate said get, get this one. Every caller is going to sound different to every person. <clears throat> Um, so speaking casually, um, I'll try not to edit anything out. Um, if I blow, just say this mountain duck caller, because uh, the RL, Haydell's RL99, in previous videos I've shown you and I've said that's what I use on my mountain ducks. I can blow that and then someone else can blow it and another bloke next to me in the layout blind will blow it. And most likely we will sound different. I have a lot deeper call when I call, so blackies and stuff like that sound a lot deeper, uh, whereas friends are a little bit more higher pitch. So every caller will sound different. For the new blokes, it's a matter of when you're learning um, to try and work out what the best caller will be to suit you. It's going to be hard. You're going to have to buy a couple, but once you start learning how to do the single quack, and then move on to say the teal um, what you'll find is a certain caller will suit your voice and your diaphragm a lot better and you'll get results and the results will excite you to the extent where all of a sudden you turn a bird and go excuse the French shit off I just did that I turned that bird out there I'd come into the decoys and I shot it okay so how good's that You've learned how to call, you've got your call up, you've turned the bird and it's come straight in and you shot it. So that's what they're, they're saying. Duck callers are used basically to say to those other ducks, hey, I'm over here. If you've just got six decoys out, yeah, fair enough. They might fly past and see you. But if you give them a couple of quacks, um, it might just sort of get their attention a bit more they're going to hear it and then they're going to peel in around for a look and go right out if you want to chatter to them talk to them they're going to actually commit a lot better than just having some stagnant decoys out in front of your reeds or out in front of the wetland or timber and stuff like that so that's why we use callers um <clears throat> as i said for my mountain ducks my go-to callers are the haydell's callers this one here is the RL99, and I've got the Haydell's DR85 there for the mountain duck, but they will do other stuff as well. So you can rip out a teal, and you can do black duck on that, um, and I can do blackies on the uh, RL99 as well, which is a lot more raspier than the DR85. So that's the go-to in the mountain duck. Um, that's in the previous videos as well. Um, in the bag, so when you head out duck hunting, most likely you'll have a little blind bag. There's one I've just got laying there. Um, I normally keep a spare caller in a Ziploc bag just in the side of my um, blind bag. Um, you just never know. Like You could be going through and you trip over your, your lanyard around there. They get full of water. And then that first 20 minutes you're trying to blow the water out your callers or doing whatever. Um, that's if you're walking in with it around your neck. If not, I just keep a spare in a Ziploc bag. Um, the spare I do keep is the timber cutter. So the timber cutter, for me, does everything. It'll do the teal, not as effective as the other ones I'll show you, but it'll still do mountain duck and it'll still do black duck. So that's my spare. Uh, I'll go through them pretty quick because we're pretty casual. Um, moving on to teal. For teal, my go-to is the basic Duck Commander brown tear call. That is it. That will just whip out your teal. That it's raspberry, raspy. Um, and it's falling apart. There you go. I'll show you. I won't edit it because I'll just leave that there and push it back in. It's, it's raspy, um, and that's the number one go-to. So very effective on teal, um, close range and a little bit further out. 
But if I want to go th that little bit further out and get their attention and say, hey, I'm over here, I'll step it up to the same Duck Commander teal call, but it's a black version, okay? For some reason, I can get a little bit higher pitch out of that, and further away, I can grab their attention. So that's just the black Duck Commander teal call. If I was in the open lake and the open water, right, you could go to a um, Primos. Um, that's the blue, I'm trying to read it here, teal call. I'll just call it the Primos. Um, that's loud. That is really loud. So for open water and the birds are circulating in the middle, they're going past you, might have a bank of trees on the outside, just trying to give you scenarios. They're whizzing around the middle, they're whizzing, whizzing, but they won't come that closer in, right? They keep looking as they wing past, right? I'll wrench on that, okay? So if I know there's teal in the area, okay, um, there's no mountain ducks. I basically don't have that lanyard on me. I've just got the teal callers and the blackies and stuff like that. And I've normally got that on in open lakes because that'll just screech right out and it'll bring them closer in for a bit of a look, all right? Um, so that's the teal callers that I've got on the lanyard. Um, so the basic duck commander teal call, the Duck Commander Teal Call again, but in black. Okay, a little bit higher pitch for me. And you've got the Primos, which is out there. Okay, so that's the teal that I've got. If we move on to the Black Duck. So the Black Duck, for me, I can't go past the Toxic Call range. Okay, Toxic Calls, they're in the US, but there is a bloke here. I'm locally from Geelong. There is a bloke here that actually imports them across. He does run a Facebook page, Toxic Calls. If you jump on that, you'll be able to see the range. If you've got any questions on those, um, shoot him up in the message box. Um, I've got three different colors, but there's numerous colors. There's, excuse me, there is full sets um, of different types and all that sort of stuff. Um, but this is my favorite go-to, okay? Um, if you are in somewhere with lots of reeds and you're in that hole and you want wanting something really deep and raspy, uh, there's an SBQ version, okay? Uh, moving on, you can go something like this, which is a bit louder for me, an SS. Um, but as I said, my favorite is this one here. It's HCH. Um, it's my go-to. If there is black ducks anywhere, that I know of, this is on my lanyard, without a doubt. Up on the rice, anywhere around my areas that I'm hunting, if I know there's an opportunity of having black duck, that is on my lanyard, okay? So that is the toxic call range, and as I said, I won't go past those for anything else on my black duck. These are just like moth to a flame. You, well, I was surprised when he said try these, and they just turn birds absolutely turn birds so yeah i'm wrapped with these absolutely wrapped i mean there, there's other callers you're going to walk into a shop and you know as i said which one am i going to get your mate said this and he said that blokes will have their favorite callers don't get me wrong and if they work for those guys and if you pick one up and it works for you go for it i'm only sort of going by my experience and what i've used and what i can help the new hunters um start with and um, learn the easiest, I suppose. So, learning, learning to call. I won't, I won't, I won't lie. It is hard. Okay, starting off, watch all your YouTube clips. You're gonna do a single quack. You're gonna learn to sort of cut the air off, and you're gonna go right into it. Um, there's heaps of heaps of videos on YouTube. I won't go through it all, but if you want something like that, let me know. I can refer you to. The toxic call bloke because he does ripping videos on how to call or you can watch youtube yourself um, or i can do it if you want to see me do it it's up to you guys shoot me a message or hit the like button comment underneath on what you want to see what you want to hear and i can do that for you um, for all the new guys out there as i said um, mountain duck we've covered teal we've covered and the black duck okay lots of callers Lots and lots of callers. You just have to find one that's going to suit you. Um, 
Now, if we go into what to put the callers on. So for all new, new hunters that are just getting into it, you have what they call a duck lanyard. Okay, so duck lanyards come in all various shapes, all various sizes. Um, this is one of the Honka Hunters one that I'm getting made here locally, so they're not imported. Um, so they are good quality because I'll make sure of it before they go out. Um, can hold up to six callers and they're double looped as well. You can get ones with single loops and doubles. Okay, so as I said, for you new guys, um, Basically, your loops may hold just a one caller, or if you get them with the double loops, that basically hangs off your lanyard. You'll grab your favorite caller, which is mine. One will lock on the front end, and one will lock on the back end here. And that locks your favorite duck caller onto the lanyard so now you are less chance of something going wrong and that falling off okay it might come apart but you're still not going to lose your favorite caller uh, when you fall over in the swamp which can happen <laughs> it's happened to me before and stuff goes wrong you might wet up the cork you might lose a reed but the main body you're not going to lose because you've got a double loop off your caller so that's why there's two loops you can put one caller here one caller there you can double up your callers but I find locking them on like that sensational um, they're the honker hunters callers um, also what you'll see on every caller lanyard I have is one of these final finishes um, the final finishes are a very effective tool an ethical tool to put the bird out of their misery okay um, as you can see it's got that really um, uh, sharp point okay that gets inserted right behind the back of the bird's head um, I'll try and do a video on that as we move into the season and hopefully help help you out with that but once again there's a Facebook page on these um, and if you google that it might come up there is a bloke um, in Victoria that also gets these in from the States as well um, I will not have um, a caller lanyard, whether I'm going out in the honker hunters and I grab the other lanyard with these on it, or I've got this lanyard here with the teal and the blackies on it. Every lanyard I've got will have one of these final finishes. Every single one. So very cheap, um, very cheap and an effective tool to have on your lanyard for all you new blokes, okay? Um, could even save you that swatter load or... Um, going out and grabbing the bird and figuring out gee what do I do with it now okay once you learn how to use these very effective uh, and of course once you get the birds um, Hong Kong hunters I've organized bird carriers as well okay so they're the bird carriers so I'll do a video as I said on those a bit later that simply can hold 10 birds on this one I'll put the link in description um, bird head goes through there that gets hooked on and you carry the bird out over your shoulders, over wherever. So that's t those two. So hopefully a little short video to progress into the start of the season. Hopefully I've given you a little bit of an insight of what I carry on the lanyards. If you do have any questions, message me on the Honker Hunters Facebook page or through there. If not, message me on here. Feel free to comment on here. As I said, everyone's callers are different. If you prefer a different caller that uh, you like, write, in, write it in the description. If you think there's an easier caller for a beginner to learn, please write it in the description because all I want to do is help these new hunters be more successful in the wetland and, of course, be successful to bring home a harvest. And, and as you all know, you were there when you guys started, you want to help everyone out, okay? And you don't want someone swinging a dead cat in the reeds next to you and you're going, my God, has he got the caller back to front? What's he doing with it? Is he, you know, just help him out. If you see someone struggling or you think, gee, that doesn't sound right, there's nothing worse than...
than being over the other side of the reeds going, my God, listen to that, okay? If you've got time, help them out, okay? I'll try and help everyone out I can. And as I said, if you want to see something, uh, let me know, message me, um, hit the like button, do all that other crap on bloody YouTube. I don't care. Uh, all I want to do is help everyone out I can, all right? I'll do some more videos as we move into the season, and we'll go from there. Talk to you soon.